For the European Space Agency ESA, 2016 will surely be remembered for the progress made within its Earth observation program Copernicus, managed in collaboration with the European Commission. ESA launched two more Sentinel satellites for Copernicus. Sentinel-3A, launched in February, which will provide highly accurate measurements of the Earth's oceans, land, ice and atmosphere. In April, Sentinel-1B was launched, joining on orbit its twin brother Sentinel-1A. The Sentinel-1 radar mission will supply an all-weather, day and night imagery of the Earth's surface. This satellite data is crucial to monitoring our planet and understanding climate change. ESA also made progress in another joint program with the European Commission, Galileo. With the launch of six more satellites from Kourou, the constellation is now composed of 18 satellites. Two were launched in May with a Soyuz rocket. The other four were launched on top of Ariane 5 last November. Ariane 5, which completed its 75th successful launch in a row, had been specially modified with a structure capable of accommodating four satellites. On the 15th of December, the European Commission declared Galileo operational for initial services, a major step for Europe's own satellite navigation system. In the telecommunications area, in January, ESA launched the EDRSA node aboard a Utilsat satellite. EDRS, or European Data Relay System, is a laser communication network. Its purpose is to significantly speed up the flow of information between low-orbit satellites and the ground, thus initiating a space data highway. 2016 was important for ESA's science missions. Launched in December 2015, LISA Pathfinder, a technology demonstration mission for gravitational wave detection, proved it was capable of measuring this new domain thus opening a new field of research for astronomy and confirming Einstein's theory of relativity. Meanwhile, the Gaia mission concluded two years of its five-year survey of celestial objects. The mission is on track to complete the most detailed mapping of the Milky Way. In September, the first catalogue of over a billion stars was released, a great tool for astronomers. Rosetta, the iconic comet chaser mission, came to an end in 2016. After the breathtaking landing of Philae on comet churyumov gerasimenko in November 2014, it was believed that the little lander was lost. However, in September, Rosetta caught sight of Philae, stuck in the shade of a cliff. After this final goodbye, the orbiter was sent for a soft landing on the comet, marking the end of these unique operations to observe a full cycle of a comet orbiting the Sun. At ESOC in Germany, the loss of signal told Mission Control that Rosetta's adventure was over. However, for the scientific community, the adventure continues. The data gathered by Rosetta will be studied for decades to come, advancing cometary science and our understanding of the universe. 2016 was also the Martian year for ESA, with the launch of ExoMars from Baikonur in April and its arrival at the Red Planet in October. After successfully placing the trace gas orbiter into Mars orbit on the 19th of October, it has sent back its first images, showing all the promises of this big lab to study Mars. In parallel, the lander demonstrator Schiaparelli collected almost all of its scheduled data before its unexpected crash landing on the Martian surface. Crucial lessons will be learned from this for the upcoming ExoMars 2020 mission which will put Europe's first rover on Mars to search for life. The precise cause of the lander loss is still being investigated, and as always in space, many lessons will be learned from this anomaly. The data gathered by the orbiter will certainly be important in the future, as at the two-day council meeting at ministerial level in Lucerne last December, the green light was given to the continuation of the ExoMars program despite the Schiaparelli mishap. The ministers in charge of space also confirmed in Switzerland the importance of exploration and agreed to continue supporting the International Space Station until 2024. In 2016, two ESA astronauts stayed aboard the ISS. In June, British ESA astronaut Tim Peake returned to Earth after a 186-day stay. In mid-November, 
Thomas Pesquet from France started the ninth ESA long-duration mission. Ministers also agreed to continue securing Europe's independent access to space, supporting new elements of ESA's launcher program. In fact, before Lucerne, the full development of Ariane 6 and Vega C had already been confirmed. Ariane 6's first flight is planned for 2020, and at Europe's spaceport in Kourou, preparations have already started with the work on a new launch pad. For ESA, the building of the future is taking shape in the Guyanese rainforest. <laughs>